West Metro uh, is still on track. It looks like uh, it's pretty much going to have full approval of all of the agencies. And uh, they are hiring a, they're calling the person an executive director, but essentially, initially, that position is going to be the person who's going to work on designing the new consolidated dispatch and kind of guiding through all of the, the transition over to it. Uh, we don't have a timeline on when, uh, you know, Evergreen will essentially fold up and move in there, but that'll be uh, dependent on setting up the radio communication links to West Metro. So those are all tied together and we should have, again, more of an answer on Thursday as to how how that's going to uh, work out. But uh, it's looking it's looking very positive. I think that uh, as we move ahead, it's, you know, both of those things are going to improve our, our capabilities and uh, get us, uh, you know, uh, um, another step up in dispatching uh, capability. But will Evergreen maintain their facility? What we anticipate is that their facility will not, no longer be manned, but it will still be there. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the dispatchers will be on it too. Right, it'll be there essentially as a backup facility, um, but uh, the dispatchers will be hired into West Metro. And, um, you know, what they're kind of been talking about, and it's still not, you know, set in stone on that, but essentially having a, uh, a VHF desk, as it were, at the West Metro facility, uh, so that there be, uh, you know, one de dedicated dispatcher per day handling mountain traffic. Uh, and they would, you know, try to make sure that any of the dispatchers that were assigned to that desk were familiar with, you know, the, the systems up here in addition to the, you know, because it's very different right now between how West Metro does it and how Evergreen does it. I think that there's going to be some blend of those two, but uh, there still will be some facets of, volunteer, of dispatching volunteer agencies that won't fall into line with West Metro that's dispatching, you know, uh, career staff fire engines currently. Um, but uh, it's, I, I think it's, I think it's going to move ahead on a pretty reasonably uh, fast uh, schedule, and I think that we're going to um, see the the the, the uh, system up and running fairly soon. We had been concerned that one of the, the time delays on the uh, VHF, you know, all county system was going to be getting uh, VHF uh, frequencies licensed. Uh, but right now we're looking at actually taking the old sheriff's VHF frequencies and reusing them, uh, you know, as that uh, that uh, license for the, for that purpose because it's currently licensed to that to the entire area and would not require relicensing. So that's a, that's a big uh, kind of shortcut in the process. Uh, we are getting into mitigation season as well. We've had uh, one of our annual mitigation uh, training sessions with the community. We've got uh, Conifer Mountain uh, homeowners are, um, uh, ha are going to be working on uh, getting FireWise communities approval this year. And um, we're looking to other communities uh, to uh, kind of join in that, that process as well, but uh, really at the beginning of kind of the season, people start thinking about, about uh, you know, starting mitigation for the season. Um, I will be attending a uh, training session on what's called the Fire Adapted Communities Program, which is a, kind of an all-encompassing program on uh, FireWise Communities, the uh, um, Ready, Set, Go program, and a number of other programs that are designed for communities like ours that have high risk of wildfire. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to bring back some, uh, you know, additional ideas about how to reach uh, our uh, residents and also how to uh, uh, get them to continue to do mitigation in rainy summers. Um, you know, right now the um, the spring is looking to be wetter than normal, which is great for. Uh, you know, for fire season, if it actually holds true, um, it's usually usually not good to make a firm prediction on that because things change, as you're probably aware. But right now, we're looking uh, like we should have another relatively quiet fire season this year, which is great. 
but we also want to continue to get people to do mitigation, you know, even if it's been a couple of years out since the last big fire. Be proactive. Exactly, exactly. Um, there are actually a couple of things that I wanted to add in that I did not uh, include in the, um, in the uh, uh, Chief's report. We had a couple of things that came up new, one of which, uh, uh, as we talked about before the meeting, uh, we have um, today, we're notified that uh, uh, there, are, there is uh, someone calling around claiming to be with uh, Elk Creek Fire Department and soliciting uh, donations by credit card and asking for uh, social security numbers. Uh, and uh, we're trying to get the word out as much as we can that uh, they, that does not have anything to do with Elk Creek Fire. And uh, we advise people strongly not to give money to whoever it is that is uh, attempting this particular scam. Um, one other thing that's come up, uh, we did uh, actually have the, uh, the first part of the architecture work for, has been started. We did have the uh, asbestos testing and lead testing went out today. Uh, we have the results for the lead and uh, fortunately they found lead only in one place which was the bathroom tile. Um, and uh, so that will have to be, you know, whoever does the work on that is going to have to follow the OSHA lead abatement guidelines. But uh, fortunately, none of the paint upstairs was lead based. Uh, the asbestos, we're not going to have an answer for on another week. Uh, so we'll see. Um, we've got our fingers crossed on that as well. Yeah. And uh, the, other, the only other thing that uh, has, we've kind of got. Uh, Word on late, lately, uh, we did get, uh, we met with work, our workers' comp uh, uh, folks, and um, we had our experience uh, number, which is the number of like that relates to how many accidents we've had over, over the past uh, five years, has improved. Um, the, uh, in fact, the uh, workers' comp uh, specialist that was there said, well, you know, your old number was probably the highest I've ever seen. Uh, but we've we've gotten that down by about uh, about 25 percent already, and uh, we anticipate uh, that it'll continue to drop each year as our uh, injury rate is much lower than than it was in in past years. So mm -hmm. that was really good news from yeah, that. Is that a rolling five year average? It's a rolling five year average. So we've got a couple more years to clean out back there before we get it back down to you know the the nice clean average or, or below average number that we want to see. And uh, that's pretty much it. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for the Chief? So the, the, architect, the architectural work is <clears throat> waiting for just these, these engineering tests? <laughs> no, they're, uh, they're ongoing. They came and uh, measured the building and they're starting to draw up uh, plans, um, but uh, it'll be a, you know, a couple weeks before we see anything from them on that. Uh, we'll probably have start off with some rough drawings from them so that, uh, you know, we make sure that we're, we're all in the same same uh, direction as far as the basic layout before they start getting into any detail work. Uh, and then uh, the other stuff, you know, the, the engineering stuff will just happen, you know, fall right. in as it falls in. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Just approach one of you regarding uh, HOA discussions on the, on the fire mitigation and so forth. Yep. Okay. Chief, where's the man? <laughs> gotcha. Okay. okay, that'll take us to new business. Uh, you want to discuss the sale of the tenders in the Yukon? Right. So we have uh, the, the two tenders that uh, we are replacing. Uh, we'd like to get those up for sale uh, pretty much as soon as possible. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've kind of run into is that we're kind of out of space with uh, some of the old vehicles and some of the new vehicles. So we want to make that switch as quickly as we can. Uh, what we're looking at is offering the, um, the uh, tenders for sale locally rather than advertising them around the country because uh, we feel, feel pretty sure that we can sell them locally. We've actually had three uh, contacts, you know, uh, the people that have expressed interest 
in those. Um, uh, one fire department and two private citizens. Uh, so um, we, we, we feel pretty certain that we can sell them locally. Uh, so what we'd like to do is advertise them, uh, you know, here in the local area, uh, set a minimum bid. Um, what we're looking at was $5,000 for the two-wheel drive tender, uh, $10,000 for the four-wheel drive tender, and then probably $4,000 for the Yukon, uh, and uh, try to sell those locally if we can get those bids. Uh, and then um, if not, then we would uh, look at going out, outside the area. So what kind of shape are they? Uh, well, the tenders are, uh, they're 1988, so they're 27 years old. Uh, they're underpowered, uh, rusty, um, you know, they're- <laughs> The low miles. But the low, very low miles. Yeah, the low mile, the good point is that they don't have a lot of miles on them. They've never gone anywhere outside the area. Uh, the bad side of that is that miles have been all up and down the hills. <laughs> yeah, um, the uh, they're you know they're they're reasonably good mechanically, uh, but uh, I know we've had some leaks. Uh, neither of the neither of them have pumps that are anywhere near passing uh, the pump test. I mean they come in at like less than fifty percent of uh, the rated capability. They're pretty worn out in that respect, uh, but they're probably just fine for contractors, uh, you know, who are looking to haul water, you know, rather than someone who's expecting to get somewhere and be able to pump 500 gallons a minute. And then the Yukon has 160 some thousand miles on it, uh, and um, has good tires, has seen some rough use, uh, so. I think uh, 4,000 is probably fair. If we don't get 4,000, we'll just go ahead and drop the drop the price on that. And our, our expectation is, if we don't get these sold at our minimums, then you know locally, then we'll probably go ahead and just put them on eBay, make it an easy uh, easy sale. I don't really expect that uh, we'd have a lot of interest if we went through the you know the fire department classifieds or anything like that on any of them. Okay. I'd entertain a motion to authorize the sale of the two tenders in the Yukon. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any other new business from the board? No. Seeing none, any old business from the board? No. Seeing none, any citizens' issues? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 At 1824. Thanks, Stan.